two episodes ago, we looked at the most common ways to customize the REST adapter, and by extension, the JSON API adapter. In the last episode, we looked at some of the core methods like build URL or the private method AJAX and what those do and how those are called by things like create record and delete record and how they call out to things like URL for create record and all the other URL for methods. In this episode, we're looking at the other miscellaneous methods that we can customize, such as the should reload methods, sorting query params, and others. We'll start with the should reload methods. So we have four of them, should background reload all, should background reload record, should reload all, and should reload record. Now all and record are the modifiers that do pretty much what you think they should. All is when you're finding an array all of a certain type, and record is when you're finding just one record. But what's the difference between reload and background reload? So the reload methods, they check basically to see whether it should reload every time a record is requested. And so if it's true, then it will always go back and reload the record, and it will wait while it's doing that. If it's false, then it'll return immediately if it has a cached record. If I was renaming this, I would rename it ignores cache record, and I would rename this ignores cache all, because that's essentially what you're deciding, is whether it's going to ignore the cache. The background reload is basically asking whether it reloads at all. So if you have true for ignores cache, then it's always going to reload, even before it returns something. But here it's asking, okay, after we've returned what's in the cache, should we go in the background and reload something? Generally, your answer to this is going to be yes. We should stay up to date with the server. I'm not really sure of a situation where we'd want to return false. If you can think of one, please tell me in the comments, because that's interesting. Now, moving on to our next miscellaneous methods. Next, we have serialize, which it just proxies to the serializer serialize method. So not much to see here in the default. You can overwrite it or uh, overwrite it and call super if you want to do more stuff. Then we have default serializer, which is more for people who are making add-ons. And if you specify your default serializer, then it'll automatically do that without the user having to go in and overwrite their application serializer for each one. An important customization you can do that isn't directly a method on the adapter is inflections. So you can make a word have an irregular pluralization or an uncountable pluralization. And this is important because when you're, uh, remember path for type, it calls pluralize. So it's important that you get the verbs the same as they are on the server. I've gotten this to work mostly in our app. So it's changing it from taco. The plural was previously tacos, just adding an S, and now it's takai. But there's an interaction somewhere here where it messes up one of the other models. So somewhere in our app, we've customized something that broke this. Hopefully that won't happen in your app. So back to our methods. We have sort query params, which as you've noticed, you might've noticed, I've added some query params to our query. And by default, it sorts them in alphabetical order. However, we can change that. The documentation has a great example of a way that we can change it. So we'll go ahead and just copy that and we'll see that it's sorting it in reverse alphabetical order. And of course, it's not just alphabetical order of the keys or reverse alphabetical order of the keys. You could do it by the value, uh, by several other things. The next three come in a trio. The first and one you're most likely to overwrite is coalesce find requests. It is false by default in the REST adapter, but if you turn on to true, then it will group together your find record requests and do those in a find many. And so if you want to find user with an ID of three, user ID with five, user with an ID of six, if this is false, it'll be three separate calls. If it's true, it's just going to be one call. And that's obviously better for your load times. If you decide to turn this true, then they're going to be grouped in different ways using group records for find many. And you can decide how those are going to be grouped together based on what your server can handle. And then eventually it's going to call find many. 
Finally, the last one we're going to go over today is generate ID for record. And this won't be used very often. It's only going to be used if you're generating the ID on the client side. And typically what happens is you send your record to the server and then the server gives it an ID. And then when it's sent back, the client gets that ID. And that's really good because if it's generated on the client, there's a much greater chance of there being an ID collision with other users. But there could be situations where you need it and generate ID for record will help you out in those situations. All right, in the past three episodes, we've gone over, I believe, all of these. And hopefully that will help you when you're trying to make your own adapter or customize the REST adapter. In the final episode on adapters, we're going to go over the differences between the REST adapter and the JSON API adapter. I'll see you then.